If you struggle to draw foliage realistically, then this is a great video for you. I'm going to demonstrate my technique for drawing the effect of foliage, not trying to get bogged down in drawing the detail of foliage. This drawing took me 30 minutes to do in real time, so you're seeing it at double time. But as well as demonstrating, I want to explain the three concepts I keep in mind all the time that I believe enable me to capture the effect of foliage, not just foliage in general, but particular foliage. These three concepts that help me create a scene such as this park scene where there's lots of different types of trees all crowding in on each other. How do we not just create the effect of foliage, but the effect of different foliage, of a wide variety of leaf structures, of branch structures? How do we stop it becoming a huge tangle, a huge mess, even if we don't particularly want to draw trees as the main subject, when we have a charming architectural subject such as this pavilion, very often it can be crowded in with trees, with foliage. So creating a way of understanding, of visualising and of drawing foliage is really important. So I've let this video run slightly longer, a couple of minutes longer than normal, because I didn't want to rush the mark making too much because that's really the key thing in this video. If you want to learn how to create more effective foliage in your pen drawing, it's all, all about placing the marks, how we place them, how they look. And so as I explain these three concepts, I didn't want the, the pen to be zipping over the page too quickly that you don't actually get a chance to see being put into practice what I say. And because there are different trees in this, different types of foliage in this scene, I think it's particularly worthwhile to pay attention to the drawing of the whole video of the foliage. Because there are different types of foliage being drawn in different ways, being demonstrated in different ways. But before we talk about those three concepts, to bear in mind when drawing foliage, we do need to get this gazebo drawn. And you can see that I draw it in my normal way of choosing a part of it that I think I can draw accurately and then branching out from there, seeking to keep all the proportions correct as I move out and in this case, up. So I'm just finishing now the wooden framework. And now we have the we have the upper section. So there are some overhanging branches here, so it's important that I at least give myself an indication of where they're going to be so that I don't put lines through that space. Even with the pavilion, it's about creating the effect of the architecture, creating the effect of the building materials and elements that make it up rather than drawing the exactness of it. The first of our three concepts is about making marks. Firstly, it's about thinking marks, not thinking about lines. One of the problems I think people come into when they're trying to draw foliage and trees is that thinking lines, we start to draw lines but lines are not very effective for drawing millions of leaves. And so in the end, our lines get tangled. We don't know where to start them. We don't know where to finish them. We don't know how to represent what we're seeing by drawing lines. If we're thinking marks, we have much more flexibility. So the first thing is to think marks. The second thing is to make marks and it's to make marks that are varied as to create different marks for different textures. And if we look at different trees, we can see that the different types of foliage creates a different texture, a different visual surface. And so we want to tailor our marks 
for each tree, for each type of foliage. Now you can see down the bottom, I've already done that with the top of the hedge. I've created a ripple of marks of little flips and turns and, and loops and dashes to represent the top of the hedge. So I'm trying to create the effect of the silhouette of the top of the hedge in sunlight. And now on the lower left, I've done a similar thing, just creating the silhouette of the shrub that's in the lower left. And now I'm just doing these tiles. You see that I'm trying to create the effect of the tiles, not draw each one laboriously. So now I'm just finishing the last of the pavilion architecture. And you can see now I'm starting to do some marks to position some of the significant parts of this foliage. And you can see already I'm making different types of marks for different trees. I've got two different trees so far. Here's a third one, this dark fir tree in the back. So for my marks, I'm firstly paying attention, firstly paying attention to what I'm drawing. These branches loop, or not, they don't loop, they sag, they curve. The foliage is less at the tip and greater towards the tree. So I work in at that. The second concept, while you're watching the mark making for this one, the second concept that for me is very important when I'm drawing foliage, particularly foliage that crowds in on foliage upon foliage, is to create gaps somehow, by some means, in what I draw. I like to think of these gaps as visual breathing space, spots where our eyes get to just focus and create separation easily, to see then the different marks on each side of the gap. How we create the gap can change depending on the subject, the foliage, the lighting but wherever possible to create gaps in the different foliage, I think is really important. Now, the third concept you'll see me doing right now is creating contrast. And we create contrast by the types of marks we make, simply making different marks creates a contrast and by the value that we create with those marks whether those marks are close in on each other and become very dark or whether they're more sparse and create a lighter value so it's not just leaving a gap between things it's also massaging the way we we perhaps interpret our our image our reference what's in front of us to create contrast that help us understand what's happening more. So in this scene, where I'm, what I'm drawing now is the dark foliage behind. Now, this is actually serving a greater purpose for the pavilion at this point. It's, it's helping to define and make the pavilion stand out and particularly the wooden supports through the contrast. But it's the same principle that we're going to use with the foliage the important thing is not to get tangled up. The important thing, firstly, is to observe carefully. I can draw these trees fairly quickly in life because I'm very familiar with trees. And I think the fact that I painted trees in oils for 10 years before I tried to draw them actually really helps me because it gave me good understanding of, in effect, drawing trees through value, through lights and darks. And so now with my marks, I try to reflect those values, but also to capture the edges, the silhouettes. Silhouettes are always important. Silhouettes give us an easy identification. So we want to make sure that any marks we are using to create silhouettes of a particular foliage are particularly accurate. Now you see with this hedge, Again, I'm using different types of marks for the other foliage. Now, 
this hedge is actually made up of very, very, very small leaves. And I reflected that slightly in that silhouette edge along the top of the hedge. But generally for the hedge, I'm using fairly brisk, straight lines. Try not to let them get too straight. But again, I'm trying to create a visual contrast. I want this hedge to say, this is hedged, as opposed to this is naturally growing vegetation. And so I use the, the direction of my marks, the way I put the marks together. In effect, I'm also, as much as I'm drawing the hedge foliage here, I'm also hatching the value as well. And of course, it's a lovely contrast to the more free flowing foliage behind. So I've established this fir tree on the left hand side and I've basically just silhouetted the lighter tree in front. Lighter because it's lighter in color, it's catching the sunlight and it has a very different leaf texture. But now I've got a quite different fir tree on the other side of the pavilion. So this is where I need to pay attention. It's a great mistake to think, oh, a fir tree. I know how to draw fir trees and then all our fir trees look the same. These are different, very different types of firs and we want to draw them so they look very different. And you can, you can see that I'm using contrast here. I'm using contrast where the shadows and branches are in sunlight. And that also happens to create the gaps that I want as well. These things often work together. So I'm doing now some rough hatching for the branches that are further back in the shade. And now we have another tree that we can just see a part of coming over the top. It's a leafed tree, it's not a fir tree. And so I want my marks for that to be quite different to the marks that I'm using for the firs. With the firs, I'm really, particularly, particularly as they move towards the right side, it's more about the shadows and the silhouettes. And here we have some more branches of the firs, darker branches coming through. And again, it's creating the effect. You can see I am still drawing fairly fast if this drawing took me 30 minutes to do, then probably 20 minutes is spent on the foliage. Although we haven't spent 20 minutes yet. So now I'm trying to make some marks from this tree on the left hand side, just to give it a little more sense of being a tree. But I don't want to put too many marks because I also want to keep the effect of the bright sunlight on it and to keep the lightness of that tree in a contrast to the trees on the left and to the hedge beneath. But I need to make enough marks that we can identify it as a tree and read the sort of tree it is. So adding more hatching down to this hedge to increase the value on the lower right hand side. I just sort of realized I wasn't quite taking this as far to the right as I should have. So I'm just establishing an edge and also just checking how high I need to take it. So again, I'm, I'm looking at the shadows really at this point and I'm drawing by negative space. Sometimes the shadows are actually on the branches because the branches are shadowed and sometimes the shadows are the gaps between branches and whichever way it goes because we're always looking for contrast I go for the for the negative space outline can be helpful you, you can see that I did use some outline for these fir branches because I'm drawing the branches as a whole I'm not getting bogged down in drawing needles there whereas in other branches I draw the needles of the firs. So whichever way we work it, it really just depends on the circumstances. Where the, where the branches are in silhouettes and in shadow, then 
drawing the fur needles can be helpful. Where they're in sun, really creating the outline of the entire branch seems to work better. So if we want to draw foliage that looks realistic, I think the key thing is to create the effect of the foliage, not to try and draw the detail. And in my thinking, in my drawing, I do that firstly by concentrating on marks, particularly on variation of different types of marks for different types of foliage. I seek to introduce gaps in the work wherever I can to give breathing space and to help the brain just visually separate what's what and therefore work out what's what. And I look for contrasts. And if there aren't enough, I add my own to just again to create differences and marks, values, negative space, all things we can use to create contrast. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. Look, I hope you found this helpful. I really think it's an important video if you have any trouble in drawing foliage. And I do have a playlist on all things trees and foliage and branches. If you haven't watched it, have a look if this is an area that you think you can still improve in. And of course, you'll find this photo on my channel community page if you want to have a go drawing this particular scene with this great variety of foliage. But look, whatever you draw, and however you draw it, whether there's foliage in it or not, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.